G'day, I'm Melissa Shannon, founder of Digital Scrapbooking HQ.com. You're looking at a little card I put together at the Make and Take that Amy Tan did at Spotlight Stores in Australia just a couple of weeks back. I had a lot of fun creating tags and cards and I thought why not show you how you could do the same thing in Photoshop Elements using the new AC Digital supplies. If you download the template that's linked up below this video, you'll be able to follow along too. You can purchase the supplies from acdigitals.com or use some supplies you already have and follow along with the method I show you to create a card similar to this one. Let's get started. I've now opened up in Photoshop the cardfronttemplate.psd file. I'm now going to go to my downloaded digital supplies. You'll notice that they come as zip files and when you open them up in Windows you'll get um, to see an extract all button. Just click that button and follow the prompts to extract your files. When they're extracted you'll have a list of folders that look something like this. I'm going to collect some different papers and um, a couple of elements to use on my card. I'm just scrolling through to look for the papers that I used on my card. We'll need this green arrow paper so I'll just drag it into Photoshop Elements and it'll open up. And I'll have a look through the other paper folders to see what else I might need. Let me go for the pink and the green. You'll notice that my card originally had craft paper and the craft paper doesn't come in this digital kit. So I'm using, I'm going to use some solids instead. All right, now I'm going to take a look at the elements or embellishments. I'm going to use this ready set go arrow strip instead of a ribbon. Some things like ribbons aren't included in the digital kits at AC Digitals. I'm also going to use the brushes. I'm going to go into the PNG folder and I'm going to pull the three houses out. We just need one more paper, the on the clock paper, drag that in. And I might even try prime time as a background. Now when I'm in Photoshop Elements, if you click on the photo bin, also known as the project bin in earlier versions, you'll see that now all of the files you've opened are there ready and waiting for you. Double click on the cut front template and then go to File, Save As to save it as a card. If you save your file as a new name, you'll be able to reuse the card template anytime you like. Make sure you select Photoshop document so that you can come back and edit the layers later if you need to. The first thing I'm going to do is put in the main background paper. I'm going to click on this grey area that's, that's called paper here in the layers panel. If you can't see the layers panel, go to the layers and then drag in on the clock. Just move the paper up until it's covering the whole grey area and then go to layer, create clipping mask. Now your paper is cut to the shape of that grey area. Pretty nifty. Now let's click on paper strip and drag over that green arrow paper. Again, I'll just move it so that it covers up my whole card and press Control G, which is your scrapper's best friend shortcut. It does the same thing as layer clipping mask. Now I'm going to use another piece of paper instead of this craft. I'm not sure. I'm going to try the pink and see how that looks. Press Control G. 
probably a little too pink so I'll just delete that layer. How about the green? Control G or Command G on the Mac. That looks pretty good. It looks a bit funny here where this green dot is but I can just move my paper around to make it look a bit better. And now the last item is the ribbon. I'm going to drag this arrow line here. Now immediately you see that it is the wrong way around. So what we need to do is go to image, rotate and then rotate layer 90 degrees left. Now if you just do rotate left everything will go 90 degrees left. In that case just do undo rotate or control Z or command Z on a Mac. Go to edit I mean go to image, rotate, rotate layer 90 degrees left and then position your ribbon. Now you'll notice that our ribbon does not reach to the end. I'm just going to zoom in on that top area by clicking and dragging with the zoom tool. If I move my ribbon up here, I can make it there and now doesn't quite reach the bottom so all we're going to do is holding down our alt or option key we're going to hold down alt and shift we're going to pull our ribbon down and there we go we've actually duplicated that ribbon shall I show you that again another way to do it is to just make a copy of the ribbon by pressing ctrl J and then use your arrow keys to move it down to fill in the gap making it look like one big ribbon here and I can zoom in to make sure that it looks great It looks like one nice ribbon now to me, so that's super. I'm just going to merge these two layers together so that they'll be one ribbon. I'm going to click on the first ribbon, shift click on the second ribbon and say merge layers. Now it's just one long ribbon. Now we don't need this ribbon layer anymore, so I'm going to click on the eye icon to hide that. Now it's at this point it's looking pretty good. We've got all our papers placed and we can just add our stamps. So let's start off with this one. I'll drag it on and it's quite large. So let's just resize it down by dragging on those corner handles. I think that big looks good. I'll press enter to apply the changes and I'll drag on the next house. Click and drag from the photo bit and then using those little handles I'm going to resize this one. Now with this stamp there's only a very skinny line so don't stress too much if you can't quite move it around that easily. What you'll need to do is just zoom in a bit to make sure you can grab it easily. Now I'll just get it however big I like and then the last one we'll drag that on. Oh it's very big. So we'll zoom out by pressing Control 0 or Command 0 on a Mac and then just grab those handles much easier to move this one around because it's got a nice big black area. I think that's about the right size. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of fiddling around with these three stamps to get them just in the right spot. You'll notice there's a blue line as I hover over the um, house with the heart. That just shows me that I'm about to click on that one. 
and move it. So if I click on the first house in the Layers panel and shift click on the last one, I'll have selected all three items. Then I can go to Tool Options and align the bottom edges. That lines them up perfectly in a line, so they look nice and neat. So I'm pretty happy with how everything looks. So now I'm going to add some shadows. When you print out a digital card, it's fun to have some shadows. It gives it a little bit of a 3D effect. So let's do that. I'm just going to click on the paper layer and then go to Effects and then Drop Shadows and add a soft edge shadow. And now I'm going to go back and double click on this little FX icon and reduce the size and distance of my shadow quite a bit so it's not quite so obvious. Once I'm happy with how that shadow looks, I'm going to right mouse button click copy layer style and then right mouse button paste layer style on each item that I want to add a shadow to. I'm going to save my work now and that's our completed card front. You could print it out on some card stock because it's at 300 dpi it'll look great or if you want to you could add a little bit of text for a greeting on the front using your type tool or you could even play around and add some more fun embellishments or papers if you want to print your card so that you can fold it, I recommend that you go to Image, Resize, Canvas Size, and I'll do it in centimeters here. I just want to increase the canvas size, but keep everything aligned to the right edge. So I'm going to double the width here, type in 22, and you'll see that now there's a other half of the card exactly like you'd have if you were going to fold it. Now this checkerboard pattern just means there's nothing there. It'll just print out plain like that. But if you want to you can always click and add some text or some more embellishment to the back of the card. But now when you print this whole document in Photoshop Elements file print. You'll see that it'll actually print out nicely so that you can just trim and cut your card. So I hope you enjoyed this little digital make and take. Download the card front template Photoshop document and enjoy creating your own card. I'd love to see what you create. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Photoshop Elements or digital scrapbooking, head to digitalscrapbookinghq.com.